quick revision video for the purification of organic solids. So we'll use this question here, so if you want to read through that, have a go, pause the video, and then play on when you're ready. So that reaction mixture is going to be hot because it's been refluxing, so the first thing you'll do is cool it down, crystals will form, and then you're going to filter it under reduced pressure using Buckner apparatus. You can see the diagram on the screen there. So once you've done that, you then do recrystallization. So that's done by dissolving your sample in a minimum amount of hot solvent. And the solvent in the case of aspirin is water. Basically, you need your solvent to be good at dissolving the substance when the solvent's hot and not good at dissolving it when it's cold. And you'll notice an asterisk there. I'm going to explain why minimum is important um, at the end of this slide. So once you've done that, you then need to cool it back down and that's going to get the aspirin crystals to reform, hence recrystallization. And then you're also going to filter it again under reduced pressure. Next thing you do is you'd wash your purified aspirin using cold water. Remember, we don't use hot anymore, otherwise the aspirin's going to dissolve. So we switch to cold water. So that gets rid of any final impurities, it washes them away, and then you would dry it. So why do you use a minimum amount of hot solvent? If you put loads and loads of solvent in, then when you try and cool it back down again, some of your product may stay dissolved. So the next thing we need to do is check the purity of the dry, purified aspirin. So there's two ways to do it. You could either use melting point or TLC, thin layer chromatography. So I'll run through both of those. So melting point, you'd basically measure the melting point of your sample. You compare that to a data value. Impurities lower melting points and they widen melting ranges. So the purer your sample is, the melting's going to occur closer to that data value. Remember, it's always going to be lower than it, unless it's bang on pure. And it's going to melt over a narrower range. So a melting range of around 2 degrees C would be classed as fairly pure. So obviously if the melting range is wider than that, then it's more and more impure. TLC now, so you'd run the chromatogram of your impure sample, you'd measure the RF value, and you'd compare that to a data value. Or, you could run the chromatogram of your impure sample alongside the pure sample, and you could compare the RF values directly from the TLC plate. 